Close your eyes. Focus your attention on your breath. As it comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know it's going out. Each time it comes in, each time it goes out. As you do this, you're developing some good qualities in the mind. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency. Qualities that are good to have in mind and good to develop in the mind for all sorts of purposes. But here we're developing specifically for the purpose of a happiness that lasts. Meditation is one of the three activities of merit that the Buddha said are another word for happiness. There's generosity, virtue, meditation. Notice he says the act itself is a kind of happiness. It's not the case that you have to work hard and sweat and then hope for a reward later on. In the act itself, you know that you're doing something good that's leading to happiness for you and for others. It's harming nobody at all. The fact that you can choose to do that and that you have the wisdom to do that, that's enough to make you happy right there. As for the happiness that comes as a result, that's just bonus. The action itself is good. We go through life thinking <clears throat> that we'd like to <clears throat> experience happiness. But you have to realize that the experience of happiness lies in the doing, taking a responsibility, knowing that you can make a change for the better in the world. Where there's something lacking, you can be generous. Where there are temptations to behave in unskillful ways, you can say, I'm going to stick to my principles. There's a strong sense of self-worth that comes with that, both the generosity and with the the virtue. That sense of self-worth then turns, translates over into the meditation. Because when you sit down to meditate, sometimes you find your mind wandering away doing anything but the topic of meditation. But still you realize that you were able to master generosity, you are able to master virtue. You've got some goodness to you. So on the basis of that confidence, you can stick with it, realizing that there may be difficulties as you practice meditation, but there are things that you can overcome. So in the doing of the, the goodness, that's where the happiness lies. So learn how to appreciate that. The more you appreciate it, the more you'd be happy to do good things, and the greater sense of self-worth that you develop. Sometimes we're told we're not supposed to have a sense of self, but the Buddha encourages us as we practice to have a strong sense that you are responsible. You can make a change in the world, and you can make a change for the better. You're competent to do this. You'll benefit. Everybody will benefit. The fact that you're looking for happiness in this way is a sign that you're a person of integrity, a person of wisdom, a person who's responsible, all of which are good things to be. Maybe at the end of the path we'll have to let go of our sense of self, but that's when it's done its work and you can put it aside. As long as you need to do the work, okay, have a strong sense that you are doing good for the world. And in the course of that you're doing good for yourself, too. And this way the happiness <coughs> is both in the action and in the results, in the doing and in the receiving. That way it's complete. Because people who simply want to receive happiness in this world and not do it, and create the causes, they end up pretty miserable. All they can see is pleasant sensations, but what have they done? What, have they, what do they merit? But if you know that you're doing the causes, then when the results come you can be satisfied that, yes, you're, you're deserving of them. And it's a happiness that goes deep down inside.